Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over creating some calculated controls in a new web form in, uh, in an Access database. So let's go ahead and get started here. Now I have an Access database that I've used in a couple of recent videos, and this database keeps track of a number of clients. There's about 80 or so. In fact, I'll open one up here. There's um, 83 clients listed. There's quite a few employees under contract. There's 300 employees, and there's a billing rate and a pay rate for each employee. And I have a jobs log table. My jobs log table has a little over 1,100 records, and this keeps track of the date of the job, the employee involved, the client involved, the task involved, the start time, and the end time for that particular job. Now I'm going to create a really quick form. Let me go ahead and close these tables. And fastest way to create a form, especially if that form is just out of one table, is to click once, select the table in question. In this case, I'm going to select my jobs log table, jobs log one, precisely. I'll go to the create ribbon, and I'll just click the form button. And that's going to create a form instantly out of the table that happened to be active in my navigation pane. Now I have my property sheet open. I don't need that at the moment, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. So this is my generic form that was created. Very basic, just in a, in a default style. And if I look at this in form view, right now I'm in layout view, by the way. If I click on my lower portion of my view button, I'll see that I'm in layout view. I'm going to jump over to form view. It's going to look pretty similar. And this is basically how your employees would, or you or your employees would interact with this particular form. And I can see that I can navigate through records, you know, there's 1100 of them, and I can see the job date, which employee was involved, which client was involved by their IDs though, um, which task and so forth. Task happens to be a drop down where I can change that. To do drop downs for employee ID and client ID would be a pretty useful thing, but I think we'll tackle that in another video. There's a couple ways to go about it job start time and job end time. What I would like to have happen here is that I would like to see the number of hours calculated for the job start time and the job end time. Furthermore, I would also like to consider incorporating uh, maybe the bill rate too. Once I know the number of hours for a particular job and since I already know my employee in question, I should be able to look at that employee's billing rate multiply it by the hours to put in a, um, a a bill amount right here inside of the form. Now these are things that I'd also probably do in a query and then ultimately in a report to produce an invoice but I'd like to also have it right here in the form so that way if I enter in a new job I can enter in the start time and the end time and the hours will automatically display for me and then the billing amount will automatically display for me. That'll make it easier for a customer service rep to kind of start to estimate a price, you know, well, if we enter in a job of so many hours at this employee's pay rate, this is what it will be. So I've got this one generic form created. I'm going to go ahead and jump over to design view of this form. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit of cleanup here. Um, I'm just going to click, holding down my shift key, I'll click on these other form fields. And I'm going to make them a little bit more narrow so that I've got some space to work. And really, since my job start time and job end time are right down here at the bottom, um, I'll go ahead and put in the hours worked off over here to the side. So if I jump back to form view, you'll see that my form fields look narrow. I'll end up putting my job hours, work hours over here, and then later on we can put in uh, estimated billing amount or billing amount right down here below that but it shouldn't be too tough for us. So back over to design view. So what I want to do is I want to create a control here and controls are all the kinds of objects or things you can put into a form or a report for that matter. By the way, design view of a form is practically identical to design view of a report. So if you practice here in forms, you'll find reports much easier to work with. So I've got a certainly my control panel up here and the one I want to start with first is going to be my text box and when I choose the text box control and I click and drag a box and I'm just kind of dragging it and you don't have to be too precise roughly where I want it down here it's automatically going to create a label which is happens to be another control 
that's not exactly where I want it so I'm gonna kinda move it off to the right now notice when I click and drag my control my label goes with it and that's if I click and drag it on one of the borders there and then I'll go ahead and clean this up a little bit for my label I'll go ahead and change that to um, hours now for my unbound control this is where I'm gonna type in a formula that's gonna take the start time and the end time and figure out the hours and there's already a function in access that it's gonna do all that hard work for us it's the date diff function so I'm just gonna go ahead and click in here and in fact let me take care of this real quick to make it easier for you guys to see I'm gonna make this box really big in the short term just so you can see exactly what I'm typing because it's kind of a large function so I'm gonna write out an equal sign date diff parentheses so I'm gonna use the date diff function the date diff function has several parameters the first thing is the um, uh, let's see the is the unit that you want so uh, in is for minutes and I want this in minutes comma and now I'm gonna put in square brackets you know I always use brackets when you refer to a field name I'm gonna take my job start time comma job end time closing parentheses so the date diff function I want minutes and that's what the N stands for in quotes and then the starting date which happens to be a time in this example and the ending date which happens to be a time in this example and this is going to tell me the number of minutes in between these two times and if I take the number of minutes and I divide it by 60 I'll get the number of hours so if I go to form view right now I can see that for this particular job that I'm active on right now it started at 920 finished at 450 that was seven and a half hours so now I just want to do a little bit of cleanup I'll jump back over to design view and now I can make this box a little bit smaller take my label I'll move it a little bit closer actually I want to move my control without moving both so I'll just use the move handle top left corner there we go and just kind of size them similar and I'll take my hours my label and I'm gonna jump over to format and I'm gonna make that right aligned so now when I go back to form view there we go so it's a nice cleaner look now this is gonna calculate automatically too so if I were to start to change times instead of maybe I messed up on entering this one job and it didn't finish at 450 it finished at uh, 250 I can change the 4 to a 2 and as soon as I tab away to go to some other cell or click somewhere else my hours will get recalculated it's now 5.5 hours so that's kinda of a nice thing and that is a calculated control inside of a form this particular calculated control is using the date diff function so that wasn't too bad let's go ahead and add to this form beneath my hours my calculated hours now I'd also like to put in a billing amount my billing amount is gonna utilize the employees billing rate multiplied by the hours so pretty simple multiplication formula but to really get to the, get this to work I want to include the fields in this form that are gonna be part of the calculation so I'd like to display the employees billing rate right next to their right next to their ID and I know I don't have their name in there but I'll, I'll like to display it right up in here so let's go ahead and take care of that I need to add a new field to this form so I'm in design view of my form and I'm on the design ribbon for that form I'm gonna click on add existing fields and the field that I want the employees billing rate is not in this current table so I need to show all tables and the table that I want is gonna be in my employees table and the field that I want is the employee bill rate so I'm gonna take that field and just drag it up to a blank area of my form then I'll close this field list I'll just kinda of move this around a little bit and I kinda of want it to be close to 
I guess I can line this, use my grid to line things up. There we go. That's pretty easy. And just that little change there, if I now go to form view, I'll see that for employee A1295, the employee bill rate is 2390. For the particular job that I'm active on right now, it's at 8.83 hours. If I advance to another record, you can see that each employee, oh, it looks like, if you'll notice this, I've got several jobs in a row from the same employee, A4162, so that's why my employee bill rate doesn't change until the employee changes. So now it's simply taking one formula, or I'm sorry, one field multiplied by this formula down here. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to design view, and I'm going to create a new control down here just beneath my hours. I'm going to scroll this just a little bit so you can kind of see both. And I will make a new control. Uh, once again, I'm going to use that text box control. And I'm going to start off, I'll just draw a really big rectangle right over here. It's kind of big. And for the label, I'm going to go ahead and put in bill rate. Or not bill rate, that's not a good label for it. Um, job billing amount. Move that off a little bit to the left. Now, I'm going to take the existing hours calculation. So remember, I've got this large formula in here to calculate the number of hours. I'm just going to copy that, Control-C to copy, and I'm going to paste it right up here. So I've got this large calculation here. The date difference is going to give me the number of hours for this job. And I'm going to take this response, and I want to multiply it by my employee bill rate. Now I'm going to enclose oops, opening parentheses and closing parentheses. So I'm going to enclose this formula in a set of parentheses. So then I can simply multiply by emp bill rate. Let's make sure you can see that nice and clear. There we go. So I've got this date diff function, which I calculated or put in just a second ago. We know that gives me the number of hours for the job. Now I'm multiplying by employee bill rate. And if I jump over to form view, we'll see this actually working. We need to do a little bit of cleanup, but just to make sure things are working properly. Let's pop open a little calculator here, and let's just do the math. Um, 23.9 is the employee's billing rate multiplied by 8.83 hours equals $211, and that's what we're getting down here. I'd like to format this as currency, and while I'm formatting, I might as well go ahead and make sure the hours only display one or two decimal places. So I'm going to jump back over to design view. And I can get to my property sheet in a couple ways. I can just turn on the property sheet or I can right click on the control. And it, it's below my recording here, but there's an option for properties on this uh, context menu. And that displays. And I will format this one as currency. Now for my date diff field, I'm going to format that as fixed. And I will show one decimal place. So now when I rerun this, I only see one decimal place for the hours and my job billing amount is currency. And then of course you can take a few minutes to kind of make this look a little neater, more lined up. And just so that we can see that it is working, I'll just jump over to a different job. Here's one here. And instead of 10.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., I'll change the time to 127 p.m. That of course changes the hours, in this case to three hours. And employees billing rate is 4180. Job billing amount $123.31. So have fun working with this.